Unit one, geometry, day nine. Quadrilaterals part two, draw this four-sided polygon. Then you're answering the questions. You should be able to answer the first two questions. How many sides? How many angles? What do the angles have to add up to? And then I want you to prove why they have to add up to what you put down. So take a wild guess. What do you think quadrilaterals, their interior angles, what do they have to add up to? But you should be able to answer the first two questions relatively easily. For which one? You should use a picture in triangles. It's a rainy Thursday. Got me feeling like, huh? Oh. Normally I'm much more energetic than this, but it's just that rainy Thursday feeling. Renee's yawning, she's like, ah, 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 ah. You look like a lion there. Like, ah. If you roared, that'd have been awesome. So far we've had a lion, we've had a goat today, and we've had all kinds of things. Okay, so, Lydia, how many sides? You're a genius. There are four sides, wonderful. Lion, how many angles? My gosh, you are a rock star in the human world and the animal world. <laughs> what do the four angles have to add up to, Owen? Uh, 180. Well, that's a triangle, which had three sides, or three uh, angles. Thinking, Emma? It is 360 degrees. Oh. Circle also adds it to 360, good. So how can I prove this? Well, take a look here. We only want the angles where our segments meet, right? Where they intersect. I'm going to draw an imaginary triangle. And then I'm going to get rid of this half. Okay? What does this angle plus this angle plus this angle have to add up to? That one's 180. Yeah, that's 180. So this, so we'll call this one, two, three. We know angle one plus angle two plus angle three have to equal 180 degrees because we've already dealt with triangles, right? Okay. I'm going to redraw the other half. So let's add a couple more angles. Here's four, five, six. And this time I'll erase this little bit and this little bit. So see the triangle still? Yeah. What does angle four plus angle five plus angle six have to equal? Luke? Okay. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What we've now said is that these three angles and these three angles both add up to 180. But the two and four can add up to be that whole thing, right? And three and six can add up to be that whole thing, right? So if I take one, two, and three, four, five, and six, and I put them together, we have 360 degrees. So based on stuff that we already know, based on the fact that we know this triangle has to be 180 degrees, because we've proved that already. Based on this triangle being 180 degrees, we know that those four interior angles have to be 360 degrees. Every quadrilateral, so here's our first thing, every quadrilateral must have a sum of 360 degrees for its interior angles. Every quadrilateral must what do I have? Must have a sum of 360 no, must have a sum of 360 degrees for its interior angles. With me. So it doesn't matter what shape we have, all four angles are going to have to add up together to be 360 degrees. 
yesterday. We talked about a couple. Oh goodness. We talked about a couple things. We talked about parallel, which were lines, rays, or segments that never intersect. We talked about perpendicular, lines, rays, or segments that intersect to form a 90 degree angle. So now we are going to talk about the special quadrilaterals. Your homework last night was to go home and say, hmm, find out these special quadrilaterals. Give me an example of a special quadrilateral that has a specific name. Trevor. Um, Trevor's like, I got this written down. I'm all right. A rhombus? A rhombus is rhombus. absolutely one of them. Rectangle. A rectangle. A square? A square. So we have rhombus, rectangle, square. Spirit. Mm, spirit? Dang it. No. Diamond. diamond has a specific name. It's not going to be called a diamond. Parallelogram. A parallelogram. I love that. So let's stop there. Okay? So you gave me a rhombus, a rectangle, a square, and a parallelogram. Those four are actually really, really important together. So we're going to start with those four. On the chalkboard, I'm going to draw what's called a flow chart, okay? The very top of the flow chart is a quadrilateral. So if, if you have like half a sheet of paper left, I think you'll have enough space. But if you are at the bottom of your paper, go to a new, new page. This also okay. Yeah, go to a new sheet. Silver okay. can. Yes, ma'am. That way you'll have enough room. Yeah, you Thank you. Thank you. I mean, it wasn't service with a smile, but I'll tell you. <laughs> so I read a book to my son that is my favorite. It's called The Pout Pout Fish. I love The Pout Pout Fish, and that's kind of what you guys are right now with all this rain. I'm a pout pout fish with a pout pout fish. So I spread my dreamy weirdies all over the place. Blob. 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 And then he smiles, and I'm like, you know the pout pout fish, and then he, yeah, and then I keep reading. So, quadrilateral. What do we know? Oh, what do we know about a quadrilateral? What is a quadrilateral? Let's start with that. A four sided board. Okay. We know it's going to have four sides, and we know the angles equal something. What do the angles equal in a quadrilateral? What do they have to equal? 360. 360, good. So I would have those two things off of quadrilateral. The way this flow chart works is we are going to have arrows going up. We are going to have arrows going up. The first figure that we're going to talk about was actually the last one you guys told me about. Lydia, what was the figure you told me? Parallelogram. Parallelogram. The way this works is a parallelogram is always a quadrilateral. Okay? So, what do we know about a parallelogram before I even teach it? What do we have to know? Lydia, give me one thing. Oh, the sides are paired. No, not yet. That's not what we know yet. Emma? It's four sides. It has four sides. How do we know that? Because a parallelogram is a quadrilateral. What else do we know about the parallelogram? Owen? Angles add up to 360. Angles add up to 360. Okay? Because a parallelogram is always a quadrilateral. Oh. Hey, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This marker. So a parallelogram. First off, a parallelogram can be shortened because it just can be drawn as a shape. Okay? So a parallelogram is a quadrilateral yeah. 
that has two pairs of opposite sides that are, and then I'm going to put that 11. What did we say yesterday that that 11 was? Let's get some new hands. Come on, I need some new hands. I need some new hands. Layton. Uh, yeah, yesterday we said the number. What was those two lines? What did that mean? That was a congruent. Not congruent. Emma? Or Ella, I'm sorry. Parallel. Parallel. Okay. So, a quadrilateral that has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. So, a parallelogram will look. Like this, opposite side, opposite side. How am I going to show they're parallel? With those arrowheads. Now the opposite sides, to show that those are parallel, I can't just have one arrowhead. I need to have two because the top isn't parallel to the side. Okay? Still with me? So that is a parallelogram. So the opposite sides must be parallel. That's the key. Opposite sides must be parallel. So guess what I'm going to do? We're going to be filling out two different things. So over here, here's my picture. Over here, up to parallelogram, we're going to come off. We're going to put a little line. I'm going to leave this up. We're going to leave a little line up here, and I'm going to say opposite. sides are parallel. And guys, when Mr. H takes notes or gives us notes, I take notes just like you do. And I'm just going to show you kind of how I'm doing this. I'm going to put my full chart on one page all by itself if I can. Okay. Yep. And then I'm actually going to take the notes over the different quadrilaterals on a different page. Because the flow chart's gonna, gonna help us do something maybe a little different than our notes, okay? So that might just help you keep your thoughts and ideas organized. I love it. Okay, so maybe a flow chart on a separate page. Okay, so that's one thing that we know about parallelograms. Here's another thing that we're gonna know about parallelograms. So these are all things that we're gonna have to know just about a parallelogram. Opposite sides are congruent. What do we mean by the word congruent? Lydia. The same. So I'm going to come back to this same example. If the top is 7 inches and the side is 3 inches, Jess, what does this side have to be over here? Three inches because opposite sides are parallel and opposite sides are congruent. Gabriel, if this is seven inches, what's my bottom? Seven inches. I said bottom. Seven inches. It's only funny for me. It is. I don't care. Listen, if I'm not having fun, I don't know why I should be doing this. So, opposite sides are congruent. So guess what else we're going to have to put that? Where are we going to put that? Where else should we write opposite sides are congruent? Jess, you're pointing at it. Remember what it's called? On the flow chart. So I'm going to come over here to parallelogram again, and I'm going to say opposite, except this time I'm going to abbreviate opposite as OPP. Sides are Congruent. Okay. Now, in geometry, we would talk and we would prove things. And we, right now, I'm giving you the very briefest overview of these figures. There's only one more thing that I want you to know right now, and it's going to be another opposite. Opposite angles are 
congruent. Okay? It's the last thing that I need you to memorize for quadrilaterals or for parallelograms. Oh my goodness. Opposite angles are congruent. So, how would I show it in my figure? If I put one arc here and I have parallelogram A, B, C, D. And there's one arc in A. Where else would there have to be one arc? Isn't that on angle B, B, C, or C? Well, yes, on one of those, but if opposite angles are congruent, it can only have one choice. If there's one arc in A, where does it have to be? Go ahead. C. Angle C, because those are opposite of each other. So how would I show B and D are congruent? Just one? I would put not just one, two arcs. Why two arcs? Because I need to show that angle D and angle B are congruent, but they're not the same as angle A and angle C. Everybody with me? What do angles A, angle B, angle C, and angle D still have to add up to? Still have to add up to 360. So we're going to come back over to the flow chart once you have that copied down. And we're going to say opposite angles are congruent. And we're going to stop here and we're going to get a couple different things. We're going to do some examples. So our question is going to be, is it a parallelogram? It's a funny looking parallelogram, I know. Is it a parallelogram? Seventy degrees. Hundred ten degrees. Hundred ten degrees. Seventy degrees. Is this a parallelogram. Yes, no, and why. So look back at your notes. Is this a parallelogram? Yes, no, and why. Talk it to your shoulder partners. See what they're having to say. And if you don't have a shoulder partner, talk to the person that's closest to you. Okay, here we go. Ms. Adams, is this a parallelogram? No. no. Why not? Because what? How can you prove that? Are any of the sides given to me? Yeah. The sides are given to me? Uh, no. So we can't use anything about sides. What's given to us? The angles. Carly, so now that she's given you that the angles are given to us, why isn't this a parallelogram? Because it's not both sides that have the same What do the angles have to have? They have to be what? Good. Let's stop there. Let's see if they add up to 360. 110 plus 70 is 180. Plus 70 plus 110. Oh, okay, so that's 360. All the angles add up to 360. That's great. But what else? Come on, I need some more hands. Luke? Not What's not congruent? They're not, um, they're not the same as each other. Look, look at what we have for parallelograms. What's not congruent? Lydia? The not sides. We're still dealing with angles. The opposite angles. The opposite angles aren't congruent. 110 and this 70 are not congruent. Okay, this 70 and this 110 are not congruent. 
So it's not a parallelogram. No, opposite angles aren't congruent. Still with me there? Okay, let's try another one. Mr. H. Yes, ma'am. I made an observation when you were giving us uh, notes about a parallelogram. Yes. I noticed that there are three situations with a parallelogram mm -hmm. that everything has to be opposite. Oh, yeah. So we have opposite angles have to be congruent, right? Opposite sides are parallel and that opposite sides are congruent. So everything we look at for a parallelogram is has dealing to be with opposite, 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 right? Yes, ma'am. Dealing with everybody, say it. One, two, three. Opposite. Opposite. Okay. So here we go. Is it a parallelogram? Yes. No. Be, be able to justify your answer too. So yeah, don't just it, say yes or no. Is it a parallelogram? Yes, it is because. No, it is not because. Okay. So Gabriel, you were real quick on the draw and you said yes. Do you still agree yes? So you're saying yes. Why? Because the top and bottom sides, they're opposite, and they are the same because of the two marks. The so two these are the same, and? And the other two are the same. Very good. So opposite sides are, what should we put? What should be the last word? Congruence. Questions there. Opposite sides are congruent. Okay. That's all we're going to deal with today, but go to your flow chart and here's what I want you to draw for whenever we start again. Staff and students, could we have your attention please? The second hour band students will be going to the computer lab. Second hour band students will be going to the computer lab. And second hour art students will go to the cafeteria. Again, oh, band student to the computer lab, uh -huh. art student Smart to the cafeteria, please. So listen, we're not done. I'm sorry, still my time. You're gonna have two more arrows in these arrows at the end with the boxes. It doesn't matter which side you put. You're gonna have rectangle, And in the other box, you're going to have rhombus, which is a fun word too, because it's R-H-O-M-B-U-S. So I'm gonna grab this so we can see the flow chart, see the board a little bit, woo woo. And then we need to have this starting off in our notes. Enjoy your long weekend.